Lab TV travels to Los Angeles, California, where scientists at the Institute for Creative Technologies are designing a new generation of virtual humans. Basically what these characters are trying to do is simulate what happens between people in a face-to-face -face conversation. So uh, if I talk to that character, it has to understand the words I'm saying, but it also has to understand things like, what am I doing with my eyes? Am I raising my eyebrow? Am I smiling or frowning? Given they understand that meaning now, they have to be able to formulate how they're going to respond. So there's gestures involved in that. They have to form the words of that sentence. That sentence has to make sense. And then they have to synthesize that sentence into sounds. And then all this has to happen in about, say, 250 milliseconds, which is the time it takes for people uh, in normal conversation to talk with each other. So they are hearing, uh, understanding, and responding to people in real time. This amazing virtual human technology was created to train soldiers in the Army, but the scientists at ICT are finding all sorts of other great uses for it, like this virtual patient. The project is called the Virtual Patient Project, and we use computer-generated characters that are programmed on the computer to basically act as patients. And the doctors come in and interview these characters and try to learn interviewing skills or diagnosis skills or basically how to talk to them. This is a 16-year-old virtual patient named Justina. Nervous, sad, I can't concentrate anymore. We have to try to understand what is going inside the mind of a 16-year-old in this case. Uh, what kind of problem does she have? How do we create that behavior? How do we create that language? Virtual humans like Justina need to understand questions, no matter how they are phrased. I don't get what you mean. So the scientists are using a method called speech processing and natural language understanding to interpret what the user is saying. Natural language is I don't know. conversational language. It's the way we're speaking with each other. And so natural language research is how do we get computers to be able to process and understand and, and generate words in a natural way, the way people do between each other. They also want to give these virtual humans emotions. Computers have always been thought of as being emotionless, rational, purely intelligent, things like Spock or Data uh, from Star Trek. Emotions are actually incredibly important in how we communicate with each other. So in this project, we look at emotion in terms of how does emotion uh, change decision making? How does it relate to how we think? What things that I could do to this character might make it happy or angry or scared? And to make these characters really interactive, the scientists are developing ways for the virtual humans to actually see us. So there's different ways these characters can see me. In this room, we actually have a number of infrared cameras that can triangulate and figure out how I'm moving my body. So I can point at this guy, and if his brain was turned on, which we've turned it off for this interview, uh, he might say, it's not polite to point. This is a huge project. So the team has lots of different kinds of scientists, like psychologists, social scientists, graphics researchers, computer scientists, and artificial intelligence experts. We call this the bleeding edge of technology because we don't know where we're going with all this stuff, but we have ideas. So these characters can be used, for example, in movies as actors, or maybe even as instructors or teachers or guides, uh, maybe help you with your homework. Yeah, part of our research really is to try to break down this wall between virtual reality and real reality and make some kind of connection where they can see me, I can see them, we both respond to each other. Maybe I can even reach out and touch things in the virtual environment that I can feel. That's sort of the goal of this kind of research down the road is to really blur that barrier between what is real and what is virtual. To find out more about virtual humans, virtual patients, or ICT, check out labtvonline.org.